The COB is presented by Rabobank. Awarded 2023 SMSF Savings Bank of the Year by Mozo. Monday afternoon, this is the COB. Really pleased to be here with you. I'm Nadine Blaney. And I'm Danny Akuye. Danny, we had a bit of a market move getting on this we, afternoon we after the did. noon hour. We did. We have seen markets rally into the afternoon session. And uh, here we are, the ASX 200 up 31 and a half points, four tenths of a percent, 7,188, as it tries to make its way up to 7,200. And the SIBO 200 up seven spot, one five points, or half a percent. So it was looking all a bit dreary this morning, but clearly uh, the tone has changed. Yeah, and it's a, it's a welcome change, isn't it? I mean, we had a pretty Indeed. negative week last week. Um, we are seeing strength in some of those iron ore miners. Uh, the banks as a sector yeah, looked pretty good. And this absolutely. is even despite, you know, seeing a lot of these companies going ex-div today, even some of the most heavily weighted companies on the market, including CSL. Absolutely. CSL has gone ex-dividend. I just wanted to point out, it's really interesting, the Aussie dollar yeah. is also really firm. So maybe that Chinese yuan has found a base and, you know, that's kind of all flowing onto the positive you know, tone that we're seeing here. Yeah, well, we have a big week in economic. Let's bring up our th three themes, shall we? Those stocks moving forward, as well as uh, that strike uh, going on. Chevron yeah, going to the Fair Work Commission. Absolutely. And it's all those energy markets are really on a little bit of tender hooks at the moment mm -hmm. between uh, the oil price remaining really firm because Saudi Arabia is really tightening the screws there. And uh, yeah, I think it's still an unknown quantity to see what we're going to have, what the outcome is there with Chevron. But for the moment, it just means gas prices in Europe are being heavily hit. Yeah, I think that they were up about 14%. So you spoke with Vandana Hari, and yeah. so that will be up online shortly if you'd like to get some really solid analysis of the oil and gas markets. Um, and then we've got the expectations for all of the economic data this week, and that was where I sort of was going with your Aussie dollar story, because if we see some signs of stabilization in the China data, which we get, later in the week. And if we see, um, you know, U.S. consumer inflation yep. continuing to wane, uh, look, we could we could be watching the Aussie dollar with much interest going forward. Also, remember, we've got jobs data here locally mm -hmm. on Thursday as well. So I wonder where we saw the strength and or weakness in this market today. Very much in those heavyweight sectors, financials up about, I've got about 1.28%. Also some good buying in the materials sector. Uh, so the big miners are definitely strength with the likes of BHP and Rio up uh, over 1%, even Fortescue putting in a rally up over 1%. So you can see why the index um, has moved quite aggressively because it has targeted the two largest sectors. It's not your green shirt you didn't inspire oh, the Oh, absolutely, today, no? the green shirt, okay, yeah. yeah, definitely. The all tech <laughs> index uh, was lower after what we saw on Wall Street. Zero down by one and a half percent. It actually reports out of cycle. So we're going to be hearing from zero, I believe it's next month. Um, don't quote me yeah, on that, that I'll double right. check. And yeah, technology one also. Yeah, um, so we'll be watching those companies. The healthcare space was down by about nine tenths of a percent. But again, I mentioned that we did see CSL trading ex-dividend, although lockstep, I was just putting together a little bit of a program on the technicals lots of those technical traders watching the healthcare space it has been so weak coming under such pressure including names like resmed that um, yeah a few of them are sort of surmising mm. that we could sort of start be moving towards an accumulate phase in that healthcare space only time that would will make, tell. make a lot of uh, resmed shareholders quite happy i imagine we um <laughs> if you've been following the afr credit where credit's due excuse me They've been holding some sort of a property summit. So there's actually been a lot of information <coughs> coming out from a lot of these property mm. names. Absolutely. And also, and yeah, because <coughs> the concerns, ongoing concerns about the level of, I suppose, correction that you are going to see in some of those property prices, particularly in, uh, I'm just having a look, look here, one of the things was one of the expert guests from Blackstone is actually calling uh, office valuations could fall another 20%. So when we're looking at the property sector, it has to be very sector specific, I think, in terms of what um, the, uh, what 
investors need to look at because people are starting to put these REITs on the radar. However, you just got to notice when one is going to work in the morning that it's absolutely dead of a Monday, dead of a Friday. So there is pain in certain sectors. Yeah. And um, we'll actually be speaking with Centuria Industrial REIT tomorrow because it has done a bit of a deal. And so that will be interesting because, again, it's industrial that's been going so strong. And I know that that was some of the commentary coming from there. Hey, Banks? Yep, Banks really, really firm. Don't know what's going on there. Macquarie got absolutely, uh, well, it tanked about 3% with the earnings update Mm -hmm. for the first half last week. And uh, there we go, buying across the board. I did speak to Morningstar today. They really like Westpac at these levels. That is their preferred bank at this point in time. But across the board, buying going on. And probably if we have a look at uh, some of those treasury yields, they might be moving up correspondingly as well. But it was a day of lots of corporate top stories as well. So should we have a look at um, some of those? No, we're first of all going to have a look There's at the consumer staples. staples. Yeah, I I saw a really good note out from UBS today, Danny, and it was uh, their analysis of consumer discretionary stocks and just, again, reflecting from reporting season and uh, yeah, where they see the pressure coming through. I was a bit surprised to see that they see a negative outlook for the likes of Endeavor Group as people pull mm, back on alcohol spending. When, you know, I thought if in recession people It's would... one of the most defensive sectors. Yes. People go and have a beer and still play mm. the pokies, but maybe not. Maybe not this time around. Maybe <laughs> not. But if you can get your hands on that, um, or we'll endeavor to bring you some of that analysis actually in the next couple of days. Really, really interesting. Consumer discretionary, again, just talking about uh, the trade today. Louise Bedford from the tradinggame.com.au was talking about consumer discretionary on the charts being mm. a hot sector. Isn't it right strange, now. isn't it? Yeah. Talk so, about the pandemic having shifted everything around. <laughs> yeah, top stories. Uh, look, you couldn't look past Sims Metal. It was the worst performer yeah, on the 200 all day. Big downgrade there. Yeah. A lot of soft, soft uh, prices in the US. So those uh, recycled steel prices not happening. Yeah, and Soraya Resources, it was actually the best performer all day. It got a big loan to help develop the project. 150 million US. Yeah. yeah, from the US government. Um, and so a big positive there. And uh, Woodside Energy, just thought we'd check in on that because, of course, you know, strike action, but being good for LNG prices, Woodside up by about a percentage point. Lion Town Resources, a little bit of clarity on Abermile coming through there, um, opening their Absolutely. books to uh, the big US giant. But uh, the stock of the day, Danny, was Sims Metal. So let's take a listen to what our guests had to say. Because right. this goes through huge cycles. Yeah. Um, the ups are higher and better than you think, and the lows are far deeper um, and worse than you'd expect. And if this is the beginning of a new cycle, this is not the time to buy yeah. the stock. I would actually buy this um, at the at the right time. Um, right. Traditionally, that's been um, sub six dollars is when you, you kind of Ooh. want to look at this. Um, so it's got a potentially a long way to fall. Just basically put a new fresh paint on it and throw it back on the market. We get this story about China yeah. uh, doing stimulus. Yeah. It started in November. Mm. Every yeah. month, month and a half, the story comes back. Right? And they have done little bits on the edges. They have cut rates. But predominantly their thematic has been to alleviate cost pressures on the consumers and try and get the consumer to spend more. So what do you think? Not exactly a screaming buy. No, no. It has had a bit of a checkered past, to put it mildly. Yeah, very (laughs) at the whims of what's going on cyclically globally. All right, let's get a view on markets today. Welcome to the COB, Mark Gardner from MPC Markets. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What? put this market into third gear, do you think? Uh, look, we were underperforming the US quite a bit. Um, I think we probably had a little bit of early selling on the back um, you know, on the back of those high yields. I, I think the Bank of Japan, so the BOJ uh, governor talking about a pivot maybe towards mm-hmm. the end of the year, which pushed them up. So, um, and they've come back off their highs now, but um, I think those CPI numbers in the, the inflation numbers in China were probably obviously pretty good. I think iron ore has gone, uh, mm-hmm. gone quite well today as well. So, I mean, I mean it was really the, um, 
you know, our, our as uh, Danielle said, was our heavyweight sectors that just sort of perform today. So it makes it pretty easy to drag up the index. And even CSL, I mean, it's not a big dividend, but it's not frank. So it doesn't tend to come off, um, you know, it doesn't tend to come off too hard. So mm. it was only down, um, I think, about 0.89. But it's, yeah. the, it's trading at the bottom of the range. As you said, like a lot of those healthcare names at the moment, they're... There's a lot of value out there, particularly if, you, if you're thinking even, you know, it's not going to be a soft landing, you want to be cautious, and then those non-cyclical names are really having a, a, a hard time of it at the moment. So funny, there's definitely opportunities it? there, yeah. yeah. Everyone was so, like, nervous about this year and defensively positioned, and the defensive have oh, proved con- to be defensive. Consumer <laughs> staples in healthcare have been horrible. So <laughs> yeah, it, it's bizarre. very... Uh, a very bizarre situation at the moment, but you know it probably presents a bit of an opportunity coming into the end of the year. I would say because they're all you know really reliable companies. They've been sort of, I mean, they've been hit, and then it, the market seems to have overreacted. I'm sort of found with the earnings season, it, it just seemed a little bit thin. Like it, things were overreacting both to the upside and to the downside. So it, um, yeah, I, I think they've probably overcooked it a little bit to the downside and the likes of CSL, Polynova, ResMed particularly. Mm. Um, you know, even if everyone gets all those drugs in, uh, in for, uh, for the weight loss drugs, which people who have got diabetes can't even get their hands on at the moment. Yeah. The worst case scenario is about 18% downside for ResMed. It's dropped about 30. Yeah. So, but it's just been, it's one of those, you know, stocks you have in your portfolio you don't worry about. And mm. Obviously, when it gets hit, it's first, you know, you're a little bit late to the party to be checking on it again. But um, you would expect a definite recovery in those guys in the back half of the year. So what do you think then? Um, because, again, I've had a few conversations lately about the pressure that's been on the healthcare sector and the fact that it's ripe for some sort of a turnaround. Mm. What would the trigger be or what as an investor would you be looking at for the likes of ResMed mm. and CSL and Polynovo, the ones you just name dropped? I think ResMed's probably more of a quarterly update. Um, Polynovo, I think it's quite a volatile stock. Um, it's it's going it's going down the path of a bit of a growth phase at the moment. So, um, you know, it'll be probably a sentiment shift there. CSL is probably reporting as well, quarterly updates. So, I mean, there's no mad rush to be getting out there. Um, getting fully allocated them at the moment. The way we've approached it is we've just put in, you know, two to three percent allocations across the board on all of them and then we'll we'll obviously just we'll sort of try and buy on weakness. Or if they start to show some um, you know some technical strength we'll probably uh, add to the positions then. But the um, and there's not a lot of dividends in those stocks so you no. you know earnings season's great and all but um, but yeah I mean the likes of Polynovo if you know they they, they update fairly regularly. Um, they go if they've got good results out of the um, um, good result quarterly updates out of their expansion that should go quite well. That um, Neuron Pharmaceuticals is another really good one mm-hmm. as well that's sitting on its lows as it stands and they uh, that trafinitide drugs basically exceeded expectations and they're, they're going to have kicking goals yeah. and they're, and they're sitting at probably the lowest point since they announced those that first royalty payment. So you know it's you know, there's still opportunities in the market and um, even the, you know even in some in some of the mining sectors you know some companies have reported really well they've just been hit it's. Um, but you know you've got to you've got to sort of take that long term view as a, as an opportunity rather than be too worried about it if you're in quality stocks. So you're you're absolutely right. Quite a you know few really good stocks got knocked around in mm. reporting season. If you had to pick you know two or three to put on the shopping list at the moment, either across you know maybe tech stocks like WiseTech or mm. something. Pilbara in um, the in the lithium space. Yeah, or? Pilbara definitely in the lithium space at the moment. Um, Look, with this iron ore running as well, I think mineral resources I think, yeah. reported pretty well, and and it's been it's been under the pump because I think every time iron ore's rallied, lithium lithiums had bad sentiment and vice versa, and they're trading fairly cheaply at the moment. So mm. um, as, as I said, see those there's four healthcare names that were yeah. that are all pretty good value as well. So um, I mean, we we just we're cautiously defensive at the moment, and we'll just see what happens in the back half of the year because those. Even though we're looking at the Fed, you know, obviously potentially coming close to finishing up, um, the long-term yields are still really high at the moment. So we're only six basis points from the um, 17-year high and the 10-year mm. yield. And uh, obviously 2014 was the last time we're up here in Japan for yields when then, you know, potentially it's only 0.7. But, um, and Australia's only nine basis points from recent recent highs in the 10-year yield. So... It's gonna it's gonna grind away at um, like really some defensive names um, like Coles and Woolworths and Telstra and things that back when we had higher interest rates only traded at an average of about twenty PE and they're sitting around that twenty seven pretty because 
they've been used to that 10 year period where mm. you had to be in them for yield. Um, you don't have to be in them for yield anymore. So mm. there might be pockets of the market where those defensives aren't so defensive because they're, they're sitting at those higher PEs. Mm. So there'll be an adjustment back down a bit. Okay, so cautiously defensive for the remainder of the year. So does that mean that you're not expecting, I mean, I was reading a note from an analyst today that said, he reckons the high for the S&P ASX 200 was hit back in February mm. um, of this year. So are you anticipating just um, this grind, you know, continuing? Uh, I think that I'm just a little bit worried that there's so much there's so much going on in the background, particularly something like oil, for instance. I mean, mm. that's not going to help pushing back. It's mm. going to start pushing inflation back mm. up. Um, and I just feel, you know, with country gardens lingering in the background, I mean, the economic figures where we're sort of rejoicing in them softening at the moment. But if that becomes a trend, we're mm. going to be worried about the economy. So, and if anything else was to sort of pile onto the market, I'm not entirely sure it's got the capacity to really, to really hold, that, hold that optimism and it may turn around a little bit. Um, we've got Apple doing it with their launch yep. this week and, and the market seems really dour on that already. And yep. it's, it's fallen 300 billion in the last week. So. Yep. Um, there's a lot that can come back out of that S&P and that NASDAQ, which will look super scary, but it'll probably just initially provide a buying opportunity in the Australian market because we haven't gone with it. So it'll be, um, I think we, if we do see downside, the Australian market won't go anywhere near as hard to the downside as what the US will. So um, I think it'll be, it's, it's a good time to have a, you know, have a shopping list of things you want to be buying into and, and, um, and stick to your plan. Yeah, it sounds like you still like um quality companies though that's the it's, overarching thing yeah and things like i mean consumer discretionary wasn't really on our radar yeah. but just watching west farmers for instance um you know we're, we're really looking for any opportunity to probably buy those guys because they're at that lower end yeah. of, the, of the discount but all eight sections of their business showed growth mm. like they were eight out of eight like that's really high quality management I mean, you know, I probably wouldn't be going back into something like Nick Scarly, but I mean, as you can tell, we've got such quality retailers that, and a lot of them being found to let as well, they tend to pivot and, be, and adjust a lot quicker. So they're the sorts of things we're really looking at. Something we can look, if, if we do have a, an event that triggers some downside, stuff that we're just willing to hold on to. We're not really, you know, the speculative end at the moment for us is probably to just just giving it a miss. We might miss out on a few returns here and there, but um, you know, we we want to be stuff in stuff that we if we get stuck with it, it's just don't have, all it is is just time holding on. So um, so yeah, and there's a lot out there. Okay, well, uh, Mark, nice to see you today. Thank you, Thank you. so much Thank for you. coming in, MPC Markets. Uh, so that brings us, Danny, almost to the leaders in Legards. I think we covered some of these leaders and laggards off earlier. Uh, not a lot changed in the leaderboard there we today. Go. Um, Zero resources with that uh, 150 million dollar loan from the US. Interesting. Magellan's been on a bit of a run lately. Um, no news to, today. Yeah. No news after that bum update. And I guess bottom fishing in Link because that really got uh, heavily sold off after their results. Bank of Queensland, wow, up 3%. Again, though, that one has been severely under pressure. That was up at $8 last time I looked at it. So that's obviously been trending down. And uh, Linus, I don't think there's any particular new news there. No, I haven't seen any new news associated with Linus, but it is one of those days where we did see some of the positivity yeah, creeping into the material space. You're looking Bottom at Bank fishing. of Queensland. Yeah, yeah, only because it really is a case for various reasons why it has been sold down but it just has that little bit of a look in terms of uh, investors uh, looking to potentially bottom fish in some of those companies that have been subjected to quite a lot of selling pressure over the course of the uh, reporting season. Let's see what uh, lagged the market and I do know that Sims Metals was the worst performer in the oh, stock of the day. Yes. If you'd like to listen to that uh, full analysis you can do so on the call online or the podcast form. Megaport, I'm not aware of any news no, associated with no. Megaport as well. Say on a mining, um, we do, don't forget, have a lot of these companies trading ex-dividend as yeah. well. 
uh, Lake Resources on there, and that's a very volatile stock. It is very volatile, that one, although it looks like it's increasingly that share price is under pressure, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just having a look at Megaport. Really interesting, because obviously they're one of those themes in or exposed to the AI exposure, and it had a really great run up until the results got to a high of around $12. So now back trading around $10.76 again, probably in the absence of any news. It's just some profit taking given the big run up. And uh, Chalice Mining. No, it's uh, been so volatile as of late as well. Yes, very controversial. Yeah. They were the ones that um, uh, put out those, uh, yeah, um, untoward results, didn't they? Mm, Wasn't that Chalice no, Mining? I don't think that was no? Chalice, no. Oh, I'm getting it confused. Are you talking about today? That was... No, that was a while back. Uh, uh, the scoping, well, the sco yeah. Well, I don't anyway. know. I could be out of the loop on that one, Danny. So we'll um, we'll do our research. Pass. Guys. Come back to you. Yes. Yeah. All right. Some of the small to mid cap names here on the list. We've got a couple of lithium plays. Flipping the page, getting to the laggards, and again, Recky Pharmaceuticals discounted placement, looking to raise money in store and retail component coming online down significantly. Step one, I do know, was trading ex dividend today. I actually ah. don't know about Janison Education, but right. we can check that one out. My spidey sense says that must might be um, part of what was going on there as well. And actually, I've got an update on Megaport. So following oh, did you? news well late Friday that the director and CEO of AO Optics Technologies sold his 25,000 share stake for around $300,000. Oh. Just saw that pop up on the fin. So yeah, there's uh, lots of uh, undercurrents. Any excuse. Yeah. Any excuse. In this market. <laughs> um, look, tonight, Danny, there's not a lot on, but we no. do have a big week, as we said later. You know, we get inflation expectations, but that's just a yeah. minor precursor yeah. to what we'll get later in the week. Absolutely. And uh, clearly, the, the big news um, that we have for this week is obviously the US CPI will be out at about 10.30 uh, Wednesday evening time and we also have on Thursday we have our jobs data looking for around 40,000 jobs to be have been added in August and we also have the ECB meeting so they're the big yeah. events as well as some China activity data on Friday and I was just reading on Reuters um, just uh, Mark Gardner alluded to the fact that these property worries are not over mm. at all in China and Country Gardens that's a massive property company mm, that he referenced. Huge. It's actually facing a new test today. So voting by creditors uh, Monday, today, to you know whether or not they'll extend several debt maturities coming through. So you know, watch this space. Uh, tomorrow here, well, we get the weekly consumer confidence read as always, but we get the NAB business survey. Yeah. That's a big one. Absolutely. Westpac one. consumer confidence. Sorry, I cut you That's off. That's OK. I was just going to say, we want to know about hiring, don't we? We want to know about investment. We want to know yeah. what the businesses are seeing at the coal face because that's a component, you know, in the lead up to Thursday's unemployment rate that we really want to get insight into. You know, what are businesses doing in terms of uh, confidence and conditions? And uh, yeah, the UK. It, indeed, the uh, unemployment data. Funnily enough, I spoke to somebody this afternoon um, and uh, well, the, the, one of the consulting firms and SMEs, their confidence picked up dramatically in August, believe it or not. And they were back hiring, back starting to invest again. And it was all on the expectations that rates had hiked. Yeah, right. Finished okay. hiking, I should say. Well, we will mm. um, get some clues, uh, some little crumbs, bird crumbs <laughs> for the FOMC <laughs> this week. Look, the market by the end of it all finished up a solid half of 1%. So there's Absolutely. the Australia index, this S&P ASX 200 up by half a percent. I mean, that is a solid performance considering at the noon hour, we were trading relatively flat. Absolutely. So we'll take that on this Monday, uh, the uh, 11th of September. And dare I say, it's been 22 years since the Twin Towers. Oh, it yeah, is. Yeah, hard just to believe. A, it is hard to believe. One of those seminal events in history. Anyway, that's digressing. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it uh, it always sort of sends a shiver up the mm. spine. And you know, TVs tonight will be filled with documentaries Indeed. on uh, September 11. Well, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We're live from 9.30. Have a good one. Have a good one. The COB is presented by Rabobank.
Awarded 2023 SMSF Savings Bank of the Year by Mozo.